So we're here with Ian, New Zealand Steam Camp. So, you, yeah. Ian, is that true that you're gonna now run the the branch of the open source microfactory Steam Camp in New Zealand? Mate, if you'll have us, we are keen. So we'll host it here in Aotearoa in Palmerston North, New Zealand, um, at Taiwaninga Tutor. We're a small high school, and uh, we we love we love the co-papa. We love the mission that you guys have, and we're really keen to participate. This is great. So what what are what are the details for the event which is coming up in a month so how many people do you think we can get to sign up or what did you get um what, what um, are we looking at i i haven't put it out to contacts yet because i was just waiting for the official green light um but yeah now that we've got it i'll just be contacting everybody and anybody and i'm, I'm pretty confident we can get a few few people um yeah the, the only thing i'm a bit worried about is the price point is a bit steep for kiwis um but I think, you know, if we're hitting universities and organizations and things like that, that, you know, um, are really interested. I don't, I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 So I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. Do you think, uh, so is the school going to sponsor anybody from your school or? Yeah, we, we're, so far, I think we're committing to two seats. Okay. Um, and kind of interested in what your thoughts were around um so for example one would be for myself and then you mentioned the possibility of having a two for one um you know on working on the same uh 3d printer yeah what, what your thoughts were if i could have a few students so it'd be myself and my students working on the same one like maybe two i don't know and then the other one so we have another um site in hamilton um and so one of the um, tech teachers might come down with one of their students okay. and that's just so we're really getting as much knowledge out of it as we can right uh, for so schools. you yeah. have two two branches of your school that's right yeah two campuses one in palmerston north where we are here taiwaning a two tour and another one in hamilton which is sort of central north island just a couple of about an hour out of auckland which is taiwaning a kiroa kura um, and yeah we we like being innovative in terms of education delivery and, and something like this is just um yeah we're we're really keen and you know i've been doing a bit of research on you guys in the micro factories and mm -hmm. i think i think this is perfect for schools i think okay um yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely we're just today i heard from another san diego a private high school uh contact there but they're pretty much lining up we're gonna do one in june but they're lining up their school and three others at the same time where they're wow. pretty much guaranteeing like 12 people from each school and funding yep. that many so so that's really good yep. and yeah just yep. trying to get this uh, all over the place so we have meaningful larger scale collaboration so that we deliver the promise mm -hmm. of open source so yeah What's your background with open source? I mean, have you been in the community or any, did any open source projects or anything? No, this this was probably sort of the first time venturing into open source. I've done a bit of software development. I'm uh, just sort of working on projects for myself, projects for the school. Um, yeah, not really putting much stuff out there. So um, it's kind of new to me. I'm kind of, I really like the concept. I think, um, you know, I've been looking at your wiki and I kind of see just about everything that you're doing, you're making available to everybody. Um, so it's really a bit of a mind shift for me. And, you know, even I'm thinking about in terms of education and how we deliver our, our model here at our school in terms of curriculum, I've just been very open with and sharing with that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, it's cool. Um, what, I, I'm interested to, to do more of it. What for sure. Yeah. So you teach, you teach the tech tax class. What, what class do you teach? Yeah, so it's um, in New Zealand at high school level. It's called uh, Digital Technologies or Computer Science. Okay. Uh, so we, uh, I'm in charge of the curriculum here at, at our school. And so basically we treat it as three strands. That's um, media, so digital media, things like the Adobe Suite, graphic design, uh, photography, videography, that sort of stuff. Then we, the second strand is sort of computer programming. So, you know, just really learning programming languages. Mm -hmm. um, I teach mainly JavaScript, a um, little bit of Python, and then sometimes Scratch and App Inventor um, at the junior levels. Uh, so that's strand two. And then the third strand is sort of this digital fabrication area. So really getting into CAD, 3D printing. We're still very much in the early days, but that's why this something like um, the Steam Camps and the actual 
creating of the the three D printer yourself and the universal axes where you know the principles apply. You can scale it up to mm. however big you want. It just really appeals to me. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's so cool. Yeah, no, that's that's great. That's that's awesome because we have just scratched the power that we've built like the one inch universal axis version for like a larger torch table but we've yet to go really into the two inch and three inch because those are still yep. what we'll do so in the summer of extreme design build we'll be building out the up to the three inch for heavy duty cnc machining so that mm. still applies at that level and yeah yeah i'm excited about yeah. it because it's it's like if you've got the building blocks i mean it's yeah. a matter of having the workforce the, that's why part part of it is get those steam camps up and running we need bodies to do this this is not rocket science we can teach yeah. people and you can now put this into your classes and and i'd like to see personally like as an outcome is you got your class why don't we convert that to okay now you're actually coordinating that same class time with the other schools mm -hmm. and you're working on some mm -hmm. collaborative projects i mean yeah that'd be cool. yeah building on that's why we started because yeah. i think you guys have just got this amazing vision and so for us to sort of this is just the entry point for us and we really want to um help grow that out within yeah. our community and, and uh you know a country as a whole really yeah yeah uh, it's quite funny so you know running future camps in tandem with our other site um we you know we have relationships with other schools like it could really scale quite easily uh, because i mean it's just amazing the the, the level of education yeah. Uh, that you guys have created it's 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 amazing it's cool yeah yeah no i like mm -hmm. it i think i think that'll be good so what else do we need to cover right now so um logistics did you get a chance to look into the airlines what they do i did i did i called air new zealand um inquired about the list you know prohibit items um including electrical devices and computers and things and it's very broad like i mean that's just about it's a lot of things and they they basically said um as long as it doesn't have batteries, it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, that that was basically the gist of it. It wasn't even really Air New Zealand's rule. It was kind of like Air Security's rule. So they told me to give them a call. I called them up and they said, yeah, it should. They said 3D printer parts, you know, the electrical components of the 3D printers. I told them it was going to be quite a lot of components because, you, you know, it's parts for a lot of 3D printers. Um, and they basically said that they think, they reckon it will be fine uh, as long as there are no batteries okay um that are going into check-in luggage you can still i think you can have like the batteries if it's in your carry-on luggage yeah but if, yeah as long as it's not checked in everything should be okay yeah i ran into the the batteries in the non-checked in luggage that's okay that that was just for the uh, local flights here but i mean a flight is a flight so no mm. difference mm. international yeah um, they if, if air security was more worried about um, like, so even that thing, they were just saying that's mainly just for departing. So when you're departing, so when you're actually flying into the country, they were just more worried about your end um, in the States. Uh, but they, they, they were saying to me that 3D printer components and electrical components for the 3D printer should be fine. Okay. Yeah, it should be good. And I looked at the other airlines, like American, they didn't seem to have like... I was kind of surprised by New Zealand, like electronics of all sorts. It seemed like, whoa, what's going on here? The other ones didn't yeah. mention it. Like they basically said, okay, okay for electronics. So I didn't see an issue there, yeah. except of course yeah. for the batteries, which you only gotta do on a carry-on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, so just some of the logistic things. I've sort of made a few. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a few quick here. Uh, so Let me ask you like, this. Uh, uh, so I'm looking at a map: Hamilton, Tauranga, Cambridge um waltamo yep. hamilton where are you located do you want me to i'll screen share and i can sort yeah. of give you a tour yeah? yeah yeah let's see okay go ahead zoom out there where we're at okay so this was aotearoa new zealand beautiful country yeah um, you would fly into Auckland. Okay. Um, there's Hamilton there. That you can see Hamilton there. Yep. Is so that, that your that's place? Quite that's the other school. Uh, no, sorry, that's our other site. So where we're situated is here, Palmerston North. Okay. So if you, if your flight was to go into Palmerston North, you'd probably want a connecting flight to Palmerston North. So that's that's about a one hour flight from Auckland to Palmy. Um, and yeah, we can 
yeah, so you'd get an international flight to Auckland and then a domestic flight to Palmerston North. I'd pick you up from the airport and then, yeah, we'd just get stuck into it. What's uh, the what's distance by car from Auckland? That's, that's not driving distance? Uh, it is driving distance. It's just quite a long drive. Let's have a look. Nine hours, six hours. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, because you're traveling with quite a bit of equipment, it yeah. could be you know some cost so, involved with the extra luggage. Look, if if you wanted, if if you have a look at the the flights, and then it's more economical to drive. I'm more than happy to come and get you and and just do the drive. Um, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. You let me know what 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 you're keen for. We'll, we'll take a look at look at that. Um, yeah. If you want me to look it up, do you want me to look up your flights and stuff like that? Because you're probably like yeah. more busy than me. Yeah. Yeah. If you can cool. do that, right. if you can help out on I'll that. Check it out. Sure. Um, let's see. So we would. So we'll post up the the announcement. We want to do that. Like I'm basically trying to get it as soon as we can get it out the door. Like maybe even tomorrow. Um, yep. Friday. Friday would be good. So we have exactly like 30 days for people to sign up. We've got the two locations in the state. So we'll be collaborating with boston and richmond virginia only three places cool. right now um yeah. as we build up the population of teachers and uh, i was thinking that if we start because it's later like here it's 10 p.m you're at 5 p.m there right yep so maybe like if we start um I think it was eight. If it's at your, pl is that correct? It's it's eight a.m. at our place. What did I say in the email? It was two p.m. at yours, and eight p.m. at ours. Eight a.m. at ours, or was it the other way around? Uh, we're five hours behind, but a day ahead. Yeah, behind, so, but a day ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah, behind. So if we're starting, so we considered actually like, what if the American guy? Because I'll be there with you guys so if the american guys start at like noon to eight we can actually collaborate the whole time that that might be possible uh so we'll try mm. to see if uh, i'll talk to my people here how they feel about it but that's that's mm. doable i mean noon to eight mm. is kind of doable if we mm. want to do it for the sake of just maximizing collaboration that mm. would be good um yeah so we keep the regular hours like we do um Right, we do the um, 8 a.m. with you, right? If we started on Saturday in New Zealand, your the teams in America would be starting um, 12 p.m. on a Friday. Oh, wow. Unless you wanted to start New Zealand on a Sunday, and then they'll be starting 12 p.m. on a Saturday. Is it okay for you guys to do that, or...? uh the, the the only problem with that is that we've got students here yeah. on weekdays monday and tuesday so yeah. that just meant that having saturday and sunday here was more space for the two days and like you said that the first day is like the big build day so yeah. it's really good that there's not students here because then we can have the whole school so we sort of have like a i'll give you a bit of a yeah. tour so we because we're quite a small school, we've got one sort of large open plan, mm. sort of open learning environment. Mm -hmm. um, so I sort of envision that we could sort of set up the tables any way that we wanted mm -hmm. to do the build. So just yeah. have a bunch of bills all around and then everything else can go against the walls. Um, but when you cut into the weekdays, then this is being used for classes. Um, we do have other spaces, so it won't be a problem. But that's probably one of my biggest things is just getting a good idea of how much space. Yeah, like a, um, each each need. build team, you want to have like a four by four foot table. So is there yeah. another room that can house at least six of those or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we've got other spaces as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we definitely do. Um, but I just thought like, you know, on the weekends, we're going to have the most space. Yeah. 
That's interesting. How does it work if people start on Friday? I mean, that's doable. They miss a Friday and Monday instead of, so they go from Friday to Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So instead of uh, basically taking off Monday, Tuesday, they got Friday, Monday. I mean, that's, I think that's doable. Um, mm. See if we can. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's me definitely go. not a, a big issue if we start Sunday and go to Wednesday. Uh, it just means like, you know, for New Zealand attendees, yeah, they might have to take three days off work. Um, they'll have, you know they might have to take Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off work if we're starting on Sunday. Mm -hmm. As far um, as um, your location, the biggest town, biggest city next to you. What's the population of of Palmerston North? Palmerston North. Good question. I think it's about two hundred thousand. Oh, not way off. Eighty-eight thousand. Eighty-eight thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. How far is Wellington from you? Wellington's doable. It's only two hours. Yep. Mm -hmm. Palmerston North. Let's see. Wellington. I'm just going to see four foot by four foot. One hour fifty eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so it, it's possible that people from Wellington sign up. Now, Wellington is. Um, what, like half a million or something? Or is that smaller than that population of... Oh, Wellington's 200,000. Wellington, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's let's give it a go. So... Yeah. Um, no, I think, I think it's, um, you know, such a cool opportunity to, to get you... Mm -hmm. To come to New Zealand, I think people will travel, man. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, Do yeah. You, how good are your contacts with other schools? You, you got a lot of friends in other schools? Yeah. or? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then and, and some good connections in sort of the tech community and, and things like that. Um, and can ask other people to ask. Um, so I'm pretty confident we can get it out there. Yep. Um, the, yeah, so I think it's just going to be, um, you know, people finding accommodation for four days and things like that. It sort of makes it going from quite an easy conference to like something that's like a little bit too hard, but uh, time, you know, time will tell, you know, I've just got to start asking and see what people say. Yeah. yeah. As far as, is there any opportunity that there's another location that might be more suitable with like, say easier housing or anything or, or not really? Um, um, like, is there a possibility to move it to Hamilton so we we travel there and? Yes, that is. It's a possibility. Um, is that difficult logistically for you, or? Um, I haven't considered it, and am not fully aware of what their spaces are like at the moment. Mm. Um, but it's definitely possible, um, and probably more convenient for the Auckland bunch. Did you say that that the people from uh, Hamilton would be coming to there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That became. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. What I what I'll do is I'll I'll start talking to some people. But you're quite keen to advertise, aren't you? Like yeah. As soon as possible. Um, yeah, we can. Uh, so we do. We would like to have a venue to <laughs> to put the advertising on. We can just yeah, yeah. say. Hey, we're gonna do it on the North Island of New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've definitely got approval to host it here at Taiwan and Two Talk here, here in Palmy. Yeah. Um, I'll just uh, make a few more calls and see if Hamilton's doable. Um, so if if um, you'd be able to travel to there, if that were yeah, the yeah. Case. yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it would make sense to to bring it down to the in the United States, 
on the 13th as opposed to the 14th for the reason we said. Um, in which case we've got, if we advertised on a, if we pushed it out on the 14th of this month, one, two, three, give us exactly four weeks. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, if, so that, so if that were the case, that would ease up the, like, if I were to fly into Auckland, I have to worry about the flight down to Palm, because I, I suspect that's going to get more expensive to fly to Palmerston mm -hmm. North. Yeah. Um, that'll be convenient for my logistics uh, on one side, but yeah, yeah. But I'm open, I'm open no. to both, whatever works, whatever works for you too. Um, yeah. but I guess I would just prefer Hamilton for the logistics. Um, yeah. Is the school there similar to yours in nature? Like yours is, you can call it an experimental private school or? Um, or how, what yeah, do you yeah. Call it? We're the same school, same model. Mm -hmm. um, just not too sure of the logistics of their site at the moment. Like I've, I, I'm got to, I'm fully aware of what we're capable of here. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's all right. Like I could quickly find out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's find out what we have there, and then, yeah. then when the, in the next yeah. day or two, have a have an answer for that, and let's just yep, go with sure. it. Mm -hmm. Cool, man. Yep. And I can um, explore other options too. Sweet. So, pending location. Um, what other things? So I guess you need information because you want to ship things over as well, eh? Is that right? Well, the the thing is, uh, the way it looks like right now, I mean, if it, I can take on two two lug pieces of luggage, they'll probably fit in there for, I think, four mm -hmm. four kits per piece of luggage. is kind of how it fits, I think. Mm -hmm. So. And so, how many kits would you bring if we if we? As many as we. I mean, I, I'd be limited to like I think the, the practical limit for airlines is like four or five bags. So yeah. Yeah. So. 10 up to if 10. it's four per bag yeah it's eight oh. to 16 yeah up to 16 is not a problem cool. otherwise we'd have to ship now it, interestingly yeah. it's cheaper to take the luggage than to ship so i'll probably just yeah. take the luggage yeah okay cool yeah so that'll be um, that'll be that part will be okay that means um mm. uh, we've got more leniency leniency on that Okay. Yeah. I didn't just really think about bringing the luggage, but no, I mean, that does ma actually make more sense. You just bring on four big pieces of luggage. Yeah. Yeah. I think bring, I think bring as many as you can. Um, because even if they don't necessarily, if we don't pack out the camp this time around, then sure, you know, next time, you know, we'll, we'll use them next time. Yeah. If, if that sounds good. But we'd have to, so we'd have to, the way we do the registration, so we'd put up the announcement and you guys would sign up. So, I would bring how many people sign up if you want to get extras. Yeah. I mean, you, you just have to put it. Oh, um, yes, of course. Yeah, because it's coming with you. Yeah. yeah so yeah. there's just however many there are at the time. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. 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 So what I would do is put up the registration. Do you guys have that budget media available? So like once we put it up there, you can yep. register that up? Yep. Yep. We'll register those too. Yep. Okay. Straight up. And then we, we get the advertising out. Um, are you, um, so on your entre entrepreneurial side, so what, what kind of stuff have you done? Have you ever run any enterprise or anything or? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, probably three businesses, um, on the go at the moment, just one sort of a media one. We do sort of videography for local businesses. You do that um, right now? One. Yeah, mate. Yep. Yep. So we've got, you know, cameras, tripods, lighting, microphones, um, okay, we're pretty so good to go. Be... On the area. That's a great asset. Can we take? Can you guys do the video on this so we can get a promotional course, on that? Man. We can do it, man. We got it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, that's that's really good. Um, yeah. Because that's that's what kind of sells this getting really good footage. I, I, I try to I try to get our students to do it. I'm, I'm really trying to sort of upskill them in, in those skills. Um, yeah. So uh, they can, you know, them plus myself, you know, will awesome get good shots, get some good footage. Um, that's definitely a check good bonus. Out, that's a yeah, good yeah. Bonus, Check yeah. out our um, Facebook page. We've, you know, you can sort of get a feel for the type of um, production level that we kind of like doing. Um, also, 
uh, another business. So it's just sort of a health clinic that my mum's a nurse. And so we sort of set that up and she does micro suction on people's ears and cleans out all the wax and stuff. So oh, wow. that's here in town. So we can get your ears sorted while you're here. <laughs> um, what else? And then uh, we try to do an internet of agriculture. So internet of things for sort of the agriculture space. Okay. So Palmerston North is sort of a an agriculture hub for New Zealand. There's oh, quite wow. a lot of, um, we've got Fonterra and sort of ag research, a lot of research facilities um, that sort of big in, been big in the agriculture space. And so we try to do an IoT company mm-hmm. sort of service that market. Um, it's probably, you know, I don't think the, the farmers are really ready for IoT just yet. Mm-hmm. I think the technology is still not mature enough yet. So it's like a little bit too early. Um, but that's all right. I just keep, you know, we built up good capabilities and now I just teach it to the students and maybe um, it'll be ready when they're ready and when they leave school. And yeah, yeah. Well, by that time, cool, you'll be producing your own tractors there. So, yeah, oh, mate. Model. yeah, very <laughs> cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, no, so- we've got we've got gardens and stuff and things like that here. So, we, we're trying to do really cool projects. We want to get into like solar and wind. Yeah, um, harvesting and things like that. Tell so. me, tell me your feeling about the open source product development pipeline, the open source everything store. Like, are you are you afraid to to give your secrets away? Would you actually contribute all this knowledge to to a commons or? Yeah, I think so. Eh? I think um, I was, I've, I'm currently working on a, a software project at the moment for schools, and, and a friend was challenging challenging me. This a, a good friend in America in, in California. He's saying. Um, you know, you should make it open source. And I was just like, man, but you know, I'm putting so much effort into this and this is, you know, this is completely for our school and all this of this, but he's like, man, but you know, what's the point of it is to help, help students and things like that. And I'm like, yeah, totally. And then if it's open source, more people are going to help you, you'll realize it faster and then it'll impact more people. So yeah, I can, I'm definitely um, interested and in, in keen to. Explore to, how that can yeah. happen. Explore. Yeah. It explore. has to have, I mean, the thing we're trying to develop is a framework w- within which that can thrive. So, mm. you know, just to, to show you the example of the, the cordless drill challenge, the Hero X challenge that we're going to be posting, uh, design and build an enterprise, a cordless drill that's made from scrap plastic that is completely, completely open source, developed in a collaborative way, professional grade. But the idea yeah. there is you got to put enough resource and organization behind that to create mm. a reliable product on a on a tight schedule, so mm. that's the part that's never ever happened with open source, and we're trying to address mm. that. So through our challenge this September, we're going to run it for a whole six months. But part of the training the all the Steam Camp people, like yourself and everybody else, is just to get a bunch of collaboratively literate people that can co- mm. that do know how to use the tools to to work openly mm. and together in larger groups, because that's mm. you know collaboration is super rare at this time Mm. in history so yeah yeah, like true true open collaboration i mean it's you don't see it yeah it's like yeah yeah. no i'm I'm, it's just new to me and i'm keen to explore it and i think it's it is the way forward and the there is really it's hard to see the upside of like trying to hoard that to yourself you know yeah um so so i'm I'm keen to see for us to sort of explore that open source journey yeah yeah Yeah. it's really about then you're enabled to take on larger problems because it's like okay mm. you leave the you know the simple stuff that's like we get beyond that we solve that together and then you can actually focus on a- higher level applications that go towards the higher evolution of people uh, basically an abundance mindset where the mm. problems we can tackle are simply larger and we need that yeah. in the future because everything's getting yeah. more complex so, yeah 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 no, i hear you man that's yeah. cool yeah yeah, I think I think education as a whole could benefit from that sort of mentality. Yeah. And there's a lot of educationalists around and I mean, every school is doing their own thing. Yeah. You know, we, we all do the standards, but there's there's certainly no collaboration between schools, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So no, I, I think this is cool. I think it's really cool. I think we should uh, you know, Take a page out of your book and, and start to open source just what we do here as well. Yeah, mm. yeah, it sounds good. Do you have um, a people who are tech, like in terms of getting the word out there? So people who are tech teachers also, 
Um, mm. Did you reach out to a bunch of people already on this, or, or you haven't really reached out Not yet? Not yet. I was just waiting for the green light from um, our Tumuaki, our principal, um, and the board, and they're, they're all for it. They're very supportive, and so, yeah, that'll be what I do when I get home tonight is just awesome. put it out there. Okay. <laughs> what would you need for me to make that easier? Can we draw up a uh, flyer or something or that we can pass around to other schools or? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. If you if you want to do that or I can do that or whatever works for you guys. Do you guys, have the capacity um, to do a flyer? You, yeah, you yeah, on, for sure. Yeah. You teach you the software. Some, yeah. Do you have a way that you'd like to do them? Like if I can, you I can send of, you some graphics yeah. asset of our style guidelines and all of that. So maybe yeah, cool. we can put it together. And actually, yeah, cool. while you're at it, I mean, position this is this is a global project it's not just your location okay so you got your new zealand but your co mm. global collaboration with two other sites in america so so put mm. those on there too i can send you some yeah. of the assets and and just kind of fill you in on what we have for media that you can use yeah yeah awesome yeah, yeah. seeing some like past ones as well just so yeah. i can you know get, get an idea um i was wondering around the the handling of the booking so will you just handle all bookings through the osc website so we just yeah. so when i'm telling people just refer them to osc like to the your creative like page website. so yeah yeah so we've got a page the osc workshops page cool. for registration there's the register registration thing and the whole mm -hmm. announcement so kind of pretty much a repeat of the last one except this is a shorter event for four days um but yeah yeah so we'll we'll, cool. we'll publish all of that uh, get it through our channels and newsletter and stuff awesome how how finalized does the the four-day curriculum like if people have i know when i tell people they're going to ask what will we be doing oh yeah 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 uh, it's so pretty, it is, let me show you the link of what we have right now for based on uh, the last one so steam camp curriculum let me just send that. yeah how did the the recent nine day one go it's awesome i mean we got a couple of people there that are going to be running the steam camps in the future one person is already jessica she's actually taking on the one in boston she was actually really good i mean it's great yeah. to see that so we talked about the five-legged dog slowly refining a bevy of them you know yeah it's cool. that part is really cool like i feel like i'm finally getting those properties the people who are open collaborative entrepreneurial mm. teacher builders and mm. people who have the culture that are about kind of looking a little beyond yourself Kind of yeah, deal. yeah, yeah. Um, so That's, it's yeah. personally, it's refreshing, you know. Uh, I'm yeah, meeting good yeah. people. Like, uh, you know, before this, before this team comes, I, I was just talking to Katarina, my partner here, about this. It's like I run into a cool person, maybe one or two per year, but right now, very common in hordes. So <laughs> it's good. It's good. Like a couple of people per event, and we're running, running one every month. So yeah, it's it's. I think it's finally picking up momentum. We're we're almost at the exponential curve in our ex exponential uh, yeah. environment here. But yeah, we haven't, I mean, we don't have traction yet, but I think we're very close to some major traction happening and these products starting and productization. Mm. And we're really focusing on the enterprise development part, which is something we, we've neglected for the last decade. We we're just pretty much prototyping the whole time. Mm. So mm. we're really transitioning to the business side as well yeah yeah i mean yeah so i was i was just thinking as you're talking i was thinking like um of, of another venue possibility but yeah um yeah i quite like the idea of it being here in palmerston north because mm. it would be very big for the community um instead of like something in hamilton and wellington um but yeah i'll, I'll have a think about it and i'll talk i'll talk to i'll talk to the people in hamilton yeah so I can give you like tomorrow I can actually start finalizing, but the rough, um, that's the schedule we're, we're refining. So basically, definitely we build a printer the first day. Definitely the second day we we learn about CAD so we can generate files and slice them for the printer, and then convert do a design exercise where we convert the printer into a plotter then day three mm -hmm. is about a bit more electronics we'll make a couple of few circuits um ideally we would do a, a cnc either a pen plotter or a cnc hole drill that helps us make a functional arduino circuit so we're using the machine we built where we can mm -hmm. one way we, we can do is plot the actual circuit then etch it 
and do the CNC drill to do that. So we're, we're just constantly going back to the tool chain and adding new capacities to, his, to it while we learn different designs, uh, how mm. to design stuff in FreeCAD and, and upload yeah, that constantly to. The drill's not a CNC router, it's just a hole drill. CNC hole drill. So for example, if one way to do it, because, okay, in a three axis system that we have, unless yeah. you add like a fourth axis for dual Z support, you don't have a lot of mm -hmm. um, force capability. Yeah. So you can do yeah. things like, like going down for a hole, but to mill, yeah. that's, that's much more mm -hmm. challenging. Even though the guys in Europe, it was kind of cool. They kind of riffed yeah. off on the CNC mill part and they actually started milling uh, simple things a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure the exact um, results, but well, they did do a little bit. Yeah, in could the Pro be milling? Say it again? The D, could the D3D Pro? Um, oh, well, we've done this. Yeah. We, Yeah, I mean, a machine like D3D Pro, we made a universal access machine that's a dedicated CNC circuit mill. Let me show you this. It's called the D3D CNC circuit mill. Yeah, we've got yeah. this, and it's got really good results. So um, it's all doable. This, just this machine, you can readily get to there by printing yourself another axis and adding that, but... Um, mm. that wasn't within the four day budget, um, yeah. in terms of time. Cause that would be, we wanted to do the raspberry Pi tablet the last day. Um, mm -hmm. but we can actually still consider that if we really want to what, do what that. Do you guys, what's the context of the raspberry Pi tablet? What do you guys use the tablet for? Well, uh, so we got, we got all the way up to, we didn't, we installed Raspbian on it. But the idea there was to do a film studio, so actually open source film studio with camera light, um, basically time lapse, long battery life, camera slider. Mm -hmm. We didn't get to those parts last Steam Camp because it was our first one. So we're continuing to develop that, but essentially for an open mm -hmm. source film studio where you can set up yeah. a bunch of these for documentation while we're doing the camps. So the, the, the Raspberry Pi tablets have like decent cameras on them. Oh, we have a camera module, like a really nice camera module. It's only like 25 yeah. bucks. So we put that yeah. on as a module and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's all doable. Um, but we noticed that Raspbian, like the keyboards on it are not really like a cell phone. So we wanted to install more like some other form of, form of Android. So we're working on yeah. that right now. Still, some of the guys from the last camp are continuing on that. And we'll probably install more like an Android like system. And it's kind of tricky there because the really good system it's all proprietary so you can't you can't get it for free you can't really hack it so uh you gotta yeah. pay for it so we weren't gonna do that but yeah. that's see that's one of those projects where you take your class and now okay now let's design a dedicated system and a film studio for this with all the software skills and design skills mm -hmm. that you're teaching that could be a great i mean imagine that taking your students making it into a project between all the schools and you just break it down into small modules and you just nail that in no time. Yeah. You know? well, yeah. That's what we want to get to. Yeah. 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 No, that's cool. I, I, um, I quite like the CNC mill, like the, the, the milling machine, because mm -hmm. if you're already doing the axes and then you're just going up to the mill and then it's almost like you're empowering your students to create their own maker spaces. You are. Uh, so, uh, I just like the, you know, you've got a, a complete tool set for a makerspace. Did you click on the CNC awesome. circuit mill there? Uh, yep. Yeah. yeah, click on yeah. that. Well, the idea is um, completely uh, doable. With the skills you get here, you'll be able to pretty much build another axis because you know how those work together. You can print your parts and you can get more parts. But within the four days, it's a little tight to do that because that means a four axis machine instead of three axes. A little more materials but, but and stuff. But you can but completely... Four days can be applied to then go absolutely. and create this. For example, yeah. you can make D3D Pro or the D3D yeah. CNC circuit mill with the parts you produce with this one. So that's yeah. the bootstrapping concept. And and that's what you want to see. Take that, take that to your class and do those iterations because we haven't, we actually haven't done the four axis D3D universal. We just mm. didn't get there. We, we just pretty much published the D3D Universal last November. Um, mm. But it's still the yep. same identical concept. You're using the universal axis, and it's just a three-axis geometry. That's all. Mm. So Yeah. No, see this, yeah, I love it. I think, yeah, once you've learned how to build, and build the, the three-axis, yep. 
you can just keep iterating and keep going and yeah yeah building, and the same axis right now you can go up to a machine that's 18 inch build platform so um with the same tiny eight millimeter rods up to about mm. 18 inch for the build plate that's pretty decent size i mean that's quite decent um after that you got to start scaling up the actual rod size and enlarging the plastic pieces so you can handle longer distances yeah yep. um i just had a thought yeah us voltage power voltage is 120 volts in new zealand is 240 volts yeah there's a couple of details on that do you have um do you have gfci outlets that's what we use on the because <clears throat> we in this in this model well actually we don't need that the gfc but we need to convert the the system that we have right now can take 240 so okay. we're going to need to replace the plug with your yeah team. how does it look is it like the big like european style or how does it that's something we it's need to the coordinate Australian style um i think that's different to europe it's sort of so the top two heads are sort of on an on a, on a diagonal New Zealand plug. Oh, I see. Yeah, different. So we're going to need, um, instead of the power cord we have, we're going to have to source one from there. Do you, regarding your sourcing, just to cover that, uh, you also have AliExpress there? Yes, yes. But it's about a two week, two week um, yeah. lay on shipping. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. We can consider like, um, I think pretty much everything I can bring there might be a couple of things like I, d I don't know what I can bring everything but yeah, but the things like the need... plugs we might as well get them from you, around you like you you have Amazon right Amazon and AliExpress yeah yeah okay yeah okay. Um, you mentioned in your email cordless drills and soldering irons we've probably got three cordless drills on site mm -hmm. um, but only soldering iron um so how many do you think we need um we need one per person so okay. how however many participants there are drills as well uh drills i mean they're not necessary they they help go faster so if you don't have a drill you'll spend like probably one hour more yeah on a build yeah. half an hour yeah. to an hour more depending how many times <laughs> you're messing up <laughs> but yeah. uh, cool um, i think yeah once we get a bit of better idea of numbers and then we can always just shoot out and buy some yeah yeah cool um, yeah so for now yeah i think the main main deal is just firm down button down the location if uh, i mean yeah just let me know what you want to do and if you can help on that just take a look at the flight see what we got mm. there and beyond yep, that sure. let's post it on friday i'll talk to what's my your air, what's your airport closest to you that kansas city international people? Kansas City? Yep. Cool. Yep. Awesome. Cool. All right, Martin. Well, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet um, you, Ian. If I think of anything else, I'll just shoot it through on the email. Yeah. Um, and you're pretty accessible on email, so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just. Um, during the day i'm pretty busy teaching classes and things but i always get around to them um in the evenings and stuff yeah yeah do you do all like the business that you're running you do that also on top of the school so you're pretty busy with that uh, or? kind of i'm sort of dialing those down at the moment just because i'm sort of really um uh, a bit more involved in the school and sort of taking a leadership role and um so sort of dialing those back a bit and just bringing it more into the school so i'm sort of trying to uh, i'm quite keen to sort of re frame those as social enterprises and actually get the students here sort of driving a lot of that work. You know, I think it's really valuable that they sort of get real world experience doing those sorts of things, dealing yeah. with clients. And so, yeah. And then you yeah, so just sort of changing it a bit, but still sort oh, of doing the same kind of thing. Yeah. That's really cool. Getting an enterprise level right to the students. That's great. And, yeah. and I think the promise, like when we position this out, like when you spread this to, to your friends, I think emphasize the idea that, okay, this is about let's get, let's transition your schools to collaborative development on projects mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. An idea that we yeah. can teach other teachers to run summer programs 
or otherwise get involved in a much greater effort. So I think that's we should be able to generate decent interest on that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, cool. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right, All right Ian. Um, so yeah, I that's it. So other than the logistics thing to Palmerston North, is there any other reason that you might not want to have it in Palmerston North? Like, is, was it just logistics? Largely logistics, but the other idea is that close, like if it's two hours closer to the other city, yeah, to Wellington, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that that might just attract a few more people. I don't know, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I don't know, like the kind of the distribution of the progressive areas in New Zealand, mm -hmm. so... Yep. Yeah. But no, no, no. Sweet. Just what I'll do is I'll talk to some people and see if they'd come to Palmy and if, you know, just just the ones that I've already thought, you know, would really be interested in this, I'll say, hey, would you come to Palmy? If they say no, then I'll, then I'll just quickly try and um, get another place. Yep. Yep. Cool. Okay. All right. right Ian. Well, thanks, thanks so much. much. This is great. Tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it, man. Looking yeah, forward have, to have it. You been to okay. Have you been to New Zealand before? I have not. Oh, so cool, this will be a good good yeah. deal. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> All right. Nice okay. meeting you. Yep. Talk Take soon. care. Bye-bye.